This is Sneaker Gears, my name is Levi, and welcome to a performance gears, running gears episode. We're gonna do a performance preview, so the shoe is not in hand, on the exciting new Nike Pegasus 37. Let's jump right in. So the Nike Pegasus 37 is the first all new update that we've had in three years now. Now it is using a completely new setup than what we've had the prior two years. And that seems to be Nike's trend. The 33 and 34 are very similar. 35, 36 had a lot of similarities. And now we have an all new take with the 37. First off, visually, it is taking a lot of cues from the Nike family, from its Vaporfly, the Turbo 2, and obviously the Alpha Fly. So just off the bat, it looks really nice and looks like a really high-end runner with the retail price now still at only $120, which puts it smack dead in the middle of your uh, kind of budget oriented everyday trainers. Unlike the last two generations, Nike actually did a full length zoom air on the 35 and 36 with a Cushlon midsole. It wasn't the most exciting feeling. A lot of reviewers, a lot of runners likened it to something that was just kind of plain Jane, boring. I have the 35 back here and the 36 was an improvement being slightly lighter, maybe a little bit better fitting upper, but overall the same ride. And it's a good shoe, nothing excellent, but it left you maybe wanting more and Nike offered that. So the Pegasus 36, 35, and just overall has always been a shoe that's been good, but if you're looking to spend a little bit more, Nike always had you covered. So they didn't make it too good. So here comes the Pegasus 37, and now they're putting in a full length React, which is a vastly big upgrade from the Cushlon phone. Now the Cushlon has always been a phone Nike's used that did a great job of absorbing impact, but didn't really have much feeling. It wasn't soft, it wasn't bouncy. It would absorb the impact and forces you put on, but it would be somewhat firm on takeoff. It wasn't helping you. So React is gonna give you a foam that's a little bit softer on the feel, just on your foot, a little bit lighter, and have maybe a little bit of bounce. Now React has had various forms. So the form on this, based on wear testers, writer, and founder, Drew Whitcomb, actually said the heel felt a little bit firm. Now, is that firm comparatively? We don't know. He does have a shoe in hand, but obviously it's gonna feel more firm compared to the big zoom units in the forefoot. But overall, the React is gonna be a nice upgrade. And previously, we only got that on the higher cushioned and a little heavier Vomero 14, or stepping up to the Zoomfly line, which was full length React for the Zoomfly 2 and Zoomfly 3, both of which weren't exciting either. So React can kind of be a mixed bag. Now at the same token, the Element 57, which is just a casual wear, is super soft, super light, and incredibly comfortable. So Nike is able to tune the React to give the right performance they're looking for for each shoe. Now what's special about the Pegasus 37 is not only that it's using a full length React, but it's using Zoom Air only in the forefoot. Now in past Pegasus models, it used to have a Cushlon midsole with Zoom Air in the heel. On the 33 and 34, they gave us heel and forefoot zoom units. Personally had the 33, and that was actually really comfortable. Ended up giving it to my nephew, and I got the 35. Kind of going with the odd ears here, so I'll probably have the 37 coming in as well. So we have a forefoot zoom unit with a full-length upgraded React midsole, which is a first for the Pegasus line, but it's not the first running shoe with that exact combination. The Jordan Havoc actually had four foot zoom with a full React midsole. And the React midsole was very much similar to what we had for the Epic React. So a little bit thinner, it's gonna be very light. I had an opportunity to try those on and as a wide footer, they definitely fit snug. So I chose not to get it. And as in all things, you wait a little bit, you get something a little bit better. So 37 is offering the exact same technical setup as the Jordan Havoc, but with an all new updated zoom bag and a lot more React foam. So it's using four foot zoom, big deal. Well, if you're looking at the rest of the Nike lineup, the only other shoe that used that four foot zoom has been the elite two and a half times the price Alpha Fly. Now that's using a giant Viz Zoom Max, whatever you want to call it in the four foot. So it's 
liking it to its very big brother for a lot less money. Now, it's also doing that with not just a regular zoom bag like what Jordan did with the Havoc, but an all new updated zoom bag similar to what we got on the Jordan Why Not 3. If we take a look at the midsole here, you can see the size of the zoom bag and you can see the articulation or these cutouts. So Nike is able to do heat welds in the zoom bag that allows it to bend and move with your foot more naturally. Now they first started doing this with the Kyrie 5, another basketball coming from training and running different areas that Nike's involved with. So the Kyrie 5 with Zoom Turbo used a large volume zoom unit that was articulated so it would bend and move with your foot more. And now they're bringing that to the running line. Even more so, they're using a zoom bag that's double the size of what we were getting on the 35 and 36. Now, we, I haven't been able to clarify if it's as big as what was used in the 34 as far as the actual thickness, but it is bigger overall as far as the size of the zoom bag, as well as having the articulation, as well as it's closer to your foot. All this adds up to having a forefoot that's going to feel fairly springy. Having a zoom pad that close to your foot that moves with you is going to feel fantastic. And it really gives Nike a very nice sequence on what shoe you want to get as you move up through the line. Even a few weeks ago, the Pegasus 36 was 120. Obviously, you can get it cheaper. And if you want something better, you were able to get the Turbo 2. Now, this used to be called the Pegasus 35 Turbo, but this shoe essentially was better in every way over the Pegasus line. It used a much lighter foam, had a little more locked in fit, had a foam that was of a higher caliber with ZoomX and React, and you spent about 50% more, 180 versus 120, but you got a shoe that was upgraded in every way. If you were looking for a higher cushion version, you have the Zoom Fly. If you're looking for more of a heavy daily trainer, you have the Vomero, and obviously the race version was the Vapor Fly, and that was all superseded with what we have as the Alpha Fly. Now, coming soon is gonna be the Temple Fly. That what it looks like is going to be replacing the Zoom Fly series. So we have an amazing Pegasus 37 that's gonna give us really a baby version of what we're getting from the Vapor Fly and even close to the Temple Fly. Now the Temple Fly is gonna be using a lot more foam and a lot more zoom. So it's just a max cushion version. So that kind of leaves out what's gonna happen with the Turbo and the Vomero, just because for $120, if you're getting the React cushion and you're getting the zoom in the forefoot that's bouncier and moves with your foot better, is there gonna be a reason to get the Vomero or to get the Turbo? The Pegasus 37 is now upgraded with enough tech and should be a high performance enough shoe where it's really going to make you consider should you be spending more money on any of the other options. Now going back to that price tag at $120, that's pretty much spot on and what the market is going for. I think this is a better daily trainer than what you're going to be getting from say the Brooks Ghost. Uh, this is very competitive with what New Balance is offering and I would say it's better than most of the New Balance offerings, but New Balance does have going for them the plethora of options, whether you want to go with a fuel cell cushion with the Rebel or the Propel, or if you want to go with a fresh foam X with a new 880 version 10, or if you want to stay with something like the Revlite in their you know, 1400 or 890. So they have a lot of different options right at around that price range. So depending on your foot size, what fits you better, what you're looking for, doesn't mean the Pegasus is going to be better than each and every one of those, but it does give you a best offering Overall, especially if you're just coming to running or you're not sure what shoe to get, this should be a decent option with the Pegasus 37. The only other pair I can definitely see as being a high competition for this is going to be Asics new Nova Blast. That is offering a super bouncy foam that I was able to try on luckily enough a few months ago. Really want to get my hands on a pair. It's $10 more. So I'm waiting to get a pair possibly on sale. If you guys have any connections, feel free to connect with me. Uh, that's something that's going to offer a very similar 
heel to toe drop, offering maybe even more bouncy ride. Now it does have more cushion in the heel versus the Pegasus 37, even though it has more foam in the heel, the majority of that zoom is in the forefoot. So that's where you're getting that bounce. So depending what kind of runner you are, if you're a mid and forefoot striker, I think that Pegasus 37 is gonna be better for you, which is what I myself use. Whereas the Nova Blast has a lot more heel cushion, so that might be better if you're a heel striker. So something to keep in mind, but it's definitely nice to see Nike upping their run game. And if you're a real runner and you only want to wear your Asics or Saucony or Brooks, don't discount Nike. They actually put a lot of tech and they make some really good running shoes. And just because they're not targeting only runners as specific as some of those other companies doesn't mean they're not coming out with amazing products. Hopefully, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about this. Now, Nike isn't breaking the mold and coming out with something completely new that they haven't done, but they've taken technology that I like to see from other aspects of sports, other technologies that they've developed and bringing it all in one cohesive package that looks to be a winner. And at $120, still a fairly decent value. So I'm looking to get my hands on the pair and hopefully they can come in soon. They are not quite on sale yet. They officially do go on sale on April 23rd, whenever you are watching this in multiple different colorways. Obviously come winter, they're gonna have a shield version and who else knows what else they're gonna try to do if they're gonna have a 37 trail version because the 36 trail actually took the heel and four foot package that they were doing from the 33 and 34 and a lot of people actually like that better even on the road so you have a lot of different options here now the trail is going to be a little more expensive because it does have a little more robust outsole as well as upper because it is meant for the trails so depending what you're using it for i would still recommend the 37 if you know you're going to do more miles on the road as always if you guys like that video please give it a thumbs up please feel free to follow the channel we do a lot of training shoes basketball shoes and now running shoes as we're doing that a lot more especially in the stay at home quarantine time in our lives here in early 2020 now if you are following the channel put that alert button and you'll see once those 30s kevins come in and you can get my first impressions and my review when those do come in as always if you have any questions please put them in the comments below really appreciate you guys this is levi with sneaky gears and i'll come at you later